All right, I have all the parts cleaned up. They cleaned up real nice. I wanted to take a second to show you the springs. These are uh, pear-shaped holes on the end of them, and this is pretty much how it sits inside of the spring barrel. As I said earlier, one winds in one direction and the other in the opposite direction. And if we were to lay these down on the table, basically this is how it sits inside of the spring barrel. And they are both are joined right here by means of the spring barrel. And so with the winding gear on one side of the spring barrel inside of one spring and the drive gear in the other if these two were joined together as I wind this and put tension on this spring it's going to eventually wind the second spring up and that's how we're winding both springs at one time inside of the single barrel. I've inspected all of the parts and everything cleaned up real nice I don't see any abnormal wear anywhere on any of the parts. We want to go through and check all of the gearing on all of the parts and make sure that there's no excessive wear on anything. Here is the shaft that goes through the center and of course both of these pieces sit inside of your spring barrel like this. With the drive gear on the shaft I can give it a spin like this and see if it's bent in any way. And as you can see, this one's spinning nice and true. So there's no, no bent drive gear, so that's a good sign. I've also inspected the gears on the uh, spindle gear that goes to the governor, and all these are, all the teeth are in good condition, so that's good to go. The gears on the spindle is in good shape. We can check to see if the spindle is broken by inserting it back into the frame of the motor and spinning it. And as you can see that one's spinning nice and true, so that's good to go. Our governor cleaned up real nice and we'll want to go through and make sure that all these screws that hold the springs in, into place are nice and tight. Also make sure that the screws holding the weights into, into the springs are good and tight. And this one's good to go. You want to make sure that it slides back and forth like this as well. That it's not stuck in one position, but being all cleaned up like this, it, it usually works perfect. And this one's in good shape, so we're good to go there. I have all my ball bearings and the little ball bearings that are supposed to go inside of these keepers for the um, governor did finally come out. When I dropped it into the cup they, they fell out so they're in there as well. The large ball bearing is for the end of the spindle and those two little ball bearings are the ones that go inside of the keepers for the for the governor so we've got every, all the ball bearings accounted for. And the motor plate cleaned up really nice. All the old varnish and gunk come off of it real real well and I don't see any problems anywhere so we're ready to put this back together. I'll clean the table off and we'll get started. Anytime that you do a, a rebuild on a Victrola motor. It's always nice to make notes. I've made notes all along. Every motor that I do, I pretty much make a note of. It's also nice to have a digital camera so that you can snap pictures of it. Pictures are priceless when you go to put something back together again. Give you an idea of how it's supposed to go back. Okay, I'm going to start with the bottom spring. <clears throat> I need to get this pear-shaped hole down inside of here. Let's see and it needs to hook on this little hook right here and wind this way which is clockwise top spring winds in counterclockwise so let's see if I can photograph this for you and if I can this is a trial and error 
kind of thing. You just got to kind of position the spring down in there and keep trying. I'm putting a little bit of a bend on the spring like this to get it to go in place. And it's just kind of a hit and miss thing, but you do want to make sure that you've got the hole. Got it hooked on the uh, rivet. <laughs> see down in there is started so I can go ahead and wind this first spring in. To do this I am grabbing the spring right here and I'm putting a bend on it like that and I'm pushing it down in with my left hand I'm making sure that it goes all the way down in there because you want it all the way down inside of that barrel. You don't want any part of the spring to be sticking up. grabbing it, bending it, and pushing it down like that. My left hand is holding the spring barrel and it's also pushing the spring down in. And we will reach a point where the coil is small enough that it will just sit down inside. I'm not there yet, but I'm getting close. And here again, this is an operation that you don't want to get distracted. You don't want to take your hands off what you're doing. And let's see if this will go down in there now. goes. And I want to make sure that everything is all the way down in there because if it's not, now with my putty knife I'm going to put some grease inside of the barrel. I'm using an all-purpose wheel bearing grease. You can use a synthetic grease. This is a true grease. But I'm going to put about uh, three to four tablespoons right here in the openings of the spring like that and I'm just going to pack it down in there and I'll also put some lubricant in here you can use um, gear oil I started using a gear oil at one time uh, lately I've been packing a little bit of slick 50 down in there instead you don't want to underpack your spring but you don't want to really seriously over pack it as either. And eventually, through several windings, this grease will cover the entire spring first couple of windings are the most important. I tend to wind my springs all the way completely full at first just to squish the grease around. I don't recommend winding any phonograph motor completely but the first few windings I do just to make sure that the springs hold and to squish that grease around inside. And now I'm going to add just about a teaspoon of oil. This is again a Slick 50. You can use a regular motor oil, you can use a gear oil. And our first spring is inside. It's packed with grease and I'm ready to put the divider in. spring number two. OK, 
Okay, with the divider in place, there's my rivet. I'm going to wind this one in counterclockwise. I'll put my spring over on this side of the table. And again, I'd like to be able to show this to you, but just impossible to do. Hooked on the rivet, and I'm ready to start winding. Easy. Okay. And again, I'm just grabbing a hold of the spring right here. I'm bending it around and pushing it in with my left hand. And I want to make sure that it is all the way down in there or your lid won't go on. Springs are not very sharp. 17 foot spring, I wouldn't let it intimidate you. Victor, on their small tabletop machines, had a two spring motor that had a nine foot spring in it, which is a very easy spring to work with. There's really not much to a 17 foot spring, it goes in pretty easily. Again, you just don't want to take your hands off of it. And there we go. That's ready for some grease. Let's make sure that it went all the way in because you want to check this lip all the way around and make sure that it's exposed so that the lid will go in and that's just perfect. So we'll pack it with some grease. And again, three to four tablespoons of grease should do. The more grease that you put inside, the more oozes out the side, which is what happened from the Victor company. The mess that you see on either side of the spring barrel is usually grease that had oozed out of the spring barrel long ago, back when it was new. The first several windings will make that grease ooze. And if you're uncertain about how much actually to put in, it's actually better to put more in than it's better to have too much than not enough, that's for sure. So maybe just, just a tad more here. Ready for a little bit of oil. Just about a tablespoon of that. And we're ready for the lid. Sometimes lids go on easily and sometimes they don't. You want to make sure that it's all the way down in there and and that you're exposing this lip all the way around so that the retaining ring will go in. This one's not quite all the way down in there. And that went in real nice. If you need to, um, if it's not going all the way down in there, make sure your spring's all the way in for first. Of course, you want to do that before you actually put the grease back in, but if, if it's not going all the way down in there, set it on a level surface and take your hammer, wooden part of the hammer, and tap around this cover and it'll usually snap down in there. This one went in with no problem. And I'm ready for the retaining ring. I have to take my gloves off to do that. The retaining ring is usually easier if you put these ends in first and squeeze it into place. I'm just going to do it like this. And it's snapped in, and we're ready to go. And we'll put the spindle in. There's the spindle and the ball bearing that goes at the end of it. 